Hey, thanks for joining us online today at FirstChurchNP.com. If you're not there right now, I'd encourage you to go there now and check out some of the ministries that we have going on, ministry opportunities, whether that's serving, helping us feed the hungry, engaging with children or student ministries. All of them are great, and we uh, would just love to connect with you. Speaking of connect, if you would fill out our connect card online, let us know that you're watching, share with us a prayer request, or sign up for a ministry. You can do that there as well. That's firstchurchnp.com. As always, you can join us in person here in worship on Saturdays at 6.15, Sunday at 9, Sunday at 10.30. You'll be so glad you did. And, and if you're not able, then we encourage you to keep watching, but also just feel free to connect with us whenever you can. Um, lastly, I want you to plan to have the best Christmas ever. One of the ways that we, that we think will sincerely bless you and your family this year is by joining us for Christmas Eve worship at 5, 7, and 11 on Christmas Eve, December 24th. So again, those times are 5, 7, and 11. We hope you can join us for candlelight worship, and we will see you next time. Mark 1, 1 through 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you. Who will prepare your way? The voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the people from the whole Judean countryside and the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This, this is, is the word, word of God, God for the people, people of God. God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Um, I, uh, Micah had mentioned uh, earlier in worship about the craft fair yesterday. And uh, Lisa Fudge and Lori O'Donnell are kind of our coordinators for that. They did a fabulous job with that, but they could never, ever, ever lead that whole ministry without uh, just dozens and dozens and dozens of volunteers. And some of you volunteer through the course of the whole year. Some of you volunteer on the day. Uh, it's just all kind of different ways. Uh, but sometimes we forget to just say thank you and uh, one of the groups that was very involved, in addition to our young children and teenagers, uh, was also our Boy Scout troop. They were there as well. They helped with a setup as well as a teardown, and that makes things go really well. So I don't know how many of you volunteered, or uh, you may, uh, some of those volunteers are probably home sleeping this morning, recovering, but um, let's just give them an expression of our appreciation this morning for a great day. All right, I, uh, a couple of weeks ago, Cindy and I set up our nativity set at home, and uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, how many of you have a nativity uh, at home? Raise your hands. I'd, I'd like to see. Okay, almost everybody, okay? That's a good thing. The nativity that is on the screens right now was given to us by the young adults at the first church that I served as a pastor and that was in Hemingford, Nebraska. So that nativity is a gift that continues to inspire us. Now you can see that there have been some figures uh, added to it. They're a little more wooden and stiff than the others, uh, but uh, as I looked at it um, here a couple of weeks ago, uh, I began to look a little more closely uh, at each of their faces and expressions and postures. And what I began to notice is that some are standing a couple are stooping down, but all of them are turning their eyes to Jesus. And then I began to wonder this. Is there any significance to the different characters' posture? Now, I looked at a few dozen nativities online, and I noticed that there's often in every nativity set uh, a couple of the, the people or the characters who are stooping down. 
almost always Mary is stooping down. And in most of the nativity sets that I have seen, one of the three kings is also stooping down. Now, of course, I saw some nativities where Joseph is stooping down. I've seen some where the sh one of the shepherds or all of the shepherds are stooping down. I've even seen some where an angel is stooping down before the manger in which Christ is born. Here's my point. Nativities remind us that our posture and our attitude are important when we approach the Son of God. Several years after the birth of Jesus, John the Baptist addresses the matter of posture and attitude in our relationship with Jesus. So I want to take you back to the text that the children read and read again verse 7 from Mark chapter 1. There, this is what John the Baptist says. He says, I am not good enough to stoop down and untie the Son of God's sandals. Now, John understands something very important, and I think there's something important for us here, and that is that, that we come into the presence of the Son of God with a humble heart. It's the only way to come into the presence of God is with a humble heart. And for John, a humble heart is expressed in the posture that he takes when he comes into the presence of Jesus. So John knows that one of the best postures for him is to stoop down. Now we can kind of miss the significance of this because he's talking about stooping down and untying the sandal of Jesus. Now in the first century, stooping down to untie another person's sandals was, was considered one of the most menial tasks anyone could ever do. In fact, none of the Jews, including the Jews who were slaves, were required or expected to untie somebody else's sandals. That's how disgusting it was. I, I don't know how many of you have ever been to the Middle East, but it is hot there. And in the first century, they had no paved streets or roads. So everyone wore open sandals, basically, and they would walk. And I don't know how much you know this, but uh, guys' feet sweat. Maybe women's do too, I don't know. They probably perspire, right? Okay, but, um, but there's moisture on our feet. And when you're walking everywhere you go in, on dirt paths and roads, all of that is going to collect on your feet. And here's the other thing. They didn't bathe every day. I don't know if they bathed every week, okay? So your feet became like filthy, dirty. So none of the Jews, or even the Jewish slaves, were expected to do such a disgusting task as untie another person's sandals. In fact, the Gentiles, who were very far from God, were not expected or required to do it either. The only group of people who were required was the Gentile slaves. So no matter how humble John's heart is, or how reverent John's posture is, or how surrendered his attitude is, John knows that he's not even good enough. He's not even worthy enough to untie Jesus' sandals. Now, John was also very popular. He was also very spiritual. He was also very influential, not only for people in the wilderness where he was doing his ministry, but also in the cities that were nearby. But even though all of that is true, John knows that he's not worthy of the Savior's love or the Savior's grace or the Savior's salvation. And the reason that John has come to this kind of conclusion is not necessarily because he feels so unworthy or undeserving, but it's because he knows that Jesus is supremely worthy of his worship and of his love. You see, John is in awe of the greatness of the Son of God. John is amazed at the goodness of the Son of God. John is astonished at the grace of the Son of God. So the point of stooping down for John is not so much how unworthy he feels, but how worthy Jesus is 
as a son of God. Our nativities remind us that our posture and our attitude as we approach the Son of God are important. And one of the responses to the birth of Jesus is to kneel down or to bend down or even to stoop down. The psalmist has this very clear. Psalm 95, verse 6, we hear this. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. The birth of the Christ child invites us to humble ourselves before a holy God. And our nativity sets remind us of this and invite us to take this posture of stooping down. Now the challenge is this. You and me often resist stooping down. We resist this with other people. We resist this with Jesus. Sometimes we're a bit like Adam and Eve who disobey the Lord God. We're sometimes tempted to put ourselves in God's place. Pride and greed and envy kind of sneak into our hearts. But here's the truth. A prideful heart resists stooping down in the presence of a holy God. Or maybe, maybe that's not who we are right now. Maybe we're not like Adam and Eve. Maybe we're like the Apostle Peter who denies that he knows Jesus. We're sometimes tempted to keep ourselves at a distance from the Savior. Things like fear and regret and sadness does that to us. Leaves us with an anxious heart, but an anxious heart resists stooping down in the presence of a holy God. Or maybe we're like the man that Jesus says will not come to the wedding. We're sometimes tempted to focus on our busyness or our responsibilities or our obligations rather than to focus on Jesus. Things like ambition and the admiration of other people and, and our assignments does that to us. It leaves us, leaves us with a distracted heart. But a distracted heart resists stooping down in the presence of a holy God. That's why our nativity sets are important. Because they remind us to approach Jesus with a humble heart, as well as with a sense of awe and wonder at the greatness and the worthiness of the Savior. We're invited to stoop down like Mary, the mother of Jesus. We're invited to stoop down like a wise king from the east. There's good news. There's good news for any who would resist stooping down before Jesus the Christ. Jesus heals ten men with a skin disease known as leprosy. Now only one of the ten men stops, turns around, and stoops down in the presence of the Savior. Only one out of ten. In Luke chapter 17, verse 16, we hear the report. It says, he prostrated himself at Jesus' feet. Now, we, that, that's kind of a word most of us don't know, but to prostrate yourself means to put your face down to the ground. Okay, you're almost laid out flat. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him or worshipped him. Now there's this little phrase at the end of that, and he was a Samaritan. The person you would least expect to ever come before the Son of God with a humble heart. The last person you would ever expect to kneel down or bend down or stoop down in the presence of a holy God was a Samaritan. And yet that's exactly what happens. A man healed by Jesus turns around, stoops down, and gives his worship to Jesus. It's the same thing that John the Baptist was inviting people to do. It's a word called repent. It's a word called repent. And repent means to change the direction of my life, or change the way I'm thinking, or to change the focus of my heart. I repent, I make the turn, but part of making that turn is I have to understand that I will never be worthy, I'll never be deserving of Jesus' love and of God's grace. 
but I can stoop down and receive these precious and good gifts. Last night, I got to this point in the message, and uh, we have a family. They have two young preschool-age boys, and they have a little uh, daughter um, who's maybe now about three months old, I'm not sure, but just still very tiny. And um, uh, Daddy always holds the little girl, okay? It is just like the most precious thing. And she decided that she needed to let Daddy know that she wasn't very happy with something he was doing. Actually, it wasn't anything he was doing. It was just she wanted to take a nap, and I think it was too noisy in the chapel because I was talking. So, um, you know, so she, she kind of made her desire clear, and he finally had to uh, take her out. And, uh, but I saw him listening at the back door of the chapel. This is what was so fascinating about that because the next thing I wanted to say is that young children can teach us how to stoop down before the Savior. You see, the best conversation with a young child happens when you get down on their level. When you get down so that you're eye-to-eye level with a child, there's two things that happen. You are more open to listening to them And they feel more honored when you do that. If you stand above them, looking down at them, they don't feel honored, and they may not be open to you. Now, the hard thing is when you get a little bit older, you can stoop down, you can get low, but you can't get back up very easy, okay? That's the hard part. That's the hard part. The next thing that I wanted to to share, and this related also to this family last night, is that a, a newborn baby... A newborn baby can teach us about the importance of stooping down. Uh, A newborn baby doesn't have the best vision ever, okay? In fact, they see most clearly 8 to 12 inches away. That kind of, okay, 8 inches, 12 inches maybe. Not sure how good my distance is, but that's where they see best. Anything beyond that distance is a blur to them. Keep that in mind the next time you see somebody's newborn baby and then get your face like this close, okay? It'll freak out the mom and dad, but, you know, (laughs) but the baby will be able to see you, okay? So literally, if you want to really connect with a newborn child, you have to get in their face so that they can see you. Otherwise, you're just a voice and a blur. The same thing's true in our relationship with Jesus. It's when we get really close that the connection can happen. It's when we get close enough to see the work of God or the miracles of Jesus or the stirrings up of the Holy Spirit. It's when we get that close that things begin to change in our life. And in order for that to happen with a newborn, you have to bend down. You have to stoop down. And you have to draw close. Same thing with Jesus. We've got to stoop down. We've got to humble our heart. Remember, it's not about our worthiness or unworthiness. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus and his worthiness, his grace, his love. But we have to get close enough and humble enough that we can receive the love he wants to pour into us. When we stoop down in the presence of a holy God, things will change. And some of you today need to hear that message that things will change in you and in your life. Things will change. But it's just not going to change until we change our posture, until we change our attitude in the presence of a holy God. Change our posture and our attitude in the presence of the Son of God. That's what our nativity sets teach us. Sometimes we got to get down, we got to bend down, we got to stoop down. But when we do, things change. Keep this in mind. Mary, the mother of Jesus, felt unworthy. A king from the Far East who came to Bethlehem felt unworthy. The apostle Peter felt unworthy. A man who didn't go to the wedding feast felt unworthy, a man healed of leprosy, 
felt unworthy. Sometimes we all feel unworthy of God's grace and the love of Jesus. But he keeps offering it to you because he is a great and good and generous God. Our unworthiness is not the point. Jesus is worthy. So we stoop down. We bend our heart to him. And we look for him to change our life. To change our direction. To change our focus. Let us pray. Jesus, sometimes we're unwilling to stoop down because pride has seeped into our heart. And sometimes we're unwilling to stoop down simply because we feel distant from you. And sometimes we're, we're unwilling to stoop down because we're so preoccupied with all the responsibilities and obligations in our life where you just feel too busy. Forgive us, Jesus. when we don't humble ourselves in your presence. Don't let us ever be so distracted or so prideful or so busy that we miss the very things that you brought to us when you were born in Bethlehem. Help us this day, this week, to stoop down, to bend our heart to you, to give our thinking to you, and to receive what only a holy God can give. We ask our prayers in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.